Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss a Hindu undivided family or as it is more commonly known as an HUF. Well, HUF has been provided for legally under the Indian constitution in Hindu law and more or less its purposes that it serves today are for taxation purposes. However, the rationale for its formation is the commonness of property, estate and ancestral belongings and their common possession, enjoyment and ownership. So, the belongings from one common ancestor, their common sharing and enjoyment and common possession was the reason an HUF was created. So, a point that needs to be remembered is it is between a family that is it has to have a common ancestor. Now who can form an HUF? An HUF can be formed not only by Hindus as per the Hindu law but also by Sikhs and Jains. So okay another fun fact about an HUF it is also called co-parsonary. Co-parsonary. Now, let us understand how what an HUF is. It is basically a family that consists of a common ancestor and his male or female descendants up to the third generation next to him. Points that, are, that need to be considered in this area are a common ancestor, male or female descendants, and up to third generation next to him. Now, third generation is you yourself are the first generation. Your kids will be the second generation and their kids will be the third generation. So, Ek Parivar Ka Buzurg, Uski Santane or Uski Santano Ki Santane. That is the max extent of an HUF. So, now we come to a little more obscure part of uh, an HUF. There are two schools of Hindu law as per the HUF and they are 1. Dayabhag and 2. Metakshar. Now, Dayabhag is applicable only in the state of West Bengal. As per this law, the father, that is the common ancestor, is the absolute owner of all belongings and property. On the contrary, in Mitakshar, which is applicable in the rest of India, all the male members become equal right holders of the family property right from their birth. So, Mitakshar is applicable in the rest of India and it applies to all the male members of the family who become equal right holders right from their birth. Now, Hindu Succession Act was amended in 2005 and the amendment was made in Mitakshar law. As per this amendment, all sons and daughters become co-parsoners that is own the right to family and property from their birth and adoption, birth or adoption. That is, in an HUF, it is governed by one head member. We would have discussed it later, but now I think we should discuss it right away. The one head member is called Karta, and all the other members in the family are called co-parsoners. So, while in Dayabhag, which is applicable in West Bengal, the role is only held with Karta, and the co-parsoners have no rights or authority. In Mitakshar law, the sons or the daughters, right from their birth or adoption, become co-parsoners. That is, have the right to family property. And from this arrives another important ruling, which uh, is a Supreme Court ruling, that an all-female member cannot form an HUF. At least one male member must exist for the legal formation of an HUF. 
so like we talked of karta karta is the lead male member eldest male member of the family so if he dies or becomes insane or personally insolvent because personal insolvency amounts to the legal death of the person so then the next elder male co-partner in the family will take place of karta well the importance of karta is not only as the head of the family legally he is empowered to handle all the affairs to the rights of all the property and its its affairs the business he is legally empowered to handle it so the points to remember are karta karta jo hota hai eldest male hota hai if something happens to him that is he dies becomes insane or personally insolvent the next eldest male co-partner becomes karta and he is entrusted and empowered by law to handle all the affairs of the huf business or and property so karta's liability is unlimited he can do anything as in his liability is unlimited means if the family is under debt he is going to pay off till everything he owns he is also entitled to open accounts on behalf of huf so a karta can come to a bank and say that he wants to open an account on behalf of an huf he can raise loans make repayments of those loans settle those loans in court compromise on those loans and agree to arbitration on any legal matters pertaining to the huf he can allow creation of charge on the property yani ki wo apni property ko girvi bhi rakh sakta hai can appoint an agent agents are generally appointed in cases appointed in cases of wills and can delegate legally powers to the co-partners or people outside the huf to handle the affairs of the family property or business now what a karta cannot do a karta cannot enter into a partnership in his capacity as the karta of an huf he cannot enter into a partnership with anyone he cannot revive a time barred debt so another point to know is that since an huf is not governed by the indian partnership act the relationship between karta and co-partners is not that of a partnership the liability of co-partners is limited only to the extent of their claim on the huf property and not on their personal belongings so if the karta who is running a business and the business goes down the only thing at stake is the complete huf family and property uh, family property and business and the complete belongings of karta like we discussed karta's responsibility liability is unlimited but the rest of the family members that is the co-partners their liability is not unlimited that is their personal belongings will still be theirs so we will definitely get to see the legal and banking implications of all this in a while so let's come to the banker's note section of this thing shall we now at the time of account opening we obtain the huf form all details of karta and every other major co-partner of the family theek hai and this has to come also in a form of a declaration from the karta and during a loan account opening if karta signs he binds himself and the entire property huf property or business including the rights of co-partners in the property however if you want to like we discussed the co-partners will only be be liable to the extent of their right on the huf property but not on their personal belongings but as a matter of giving loans to an huf the bankers generally make sure that all the co-partners individually sign the documentation of the loan so that they are also held individually liable so 
when there is change in an HUF constitution. A HUF ki constitution may change aata hai when a new member joins the family or dies or when a minor attains his age. So whenever all these things happen, you take the consent of the, let's say when a minor attains his age, you take his consent that he is now officially and formally a member of the HUF and that he will be held liable or to the extent of his share on the HUF. And if a member dies, it is prudent for the bank to obtain the documentation once again so that the loan can be secured properly between all the remaining co-parsoners. Now here is what a co-parsoner cannot do. Until, like we said, Karta ke paas authority hoti hai that he can delegate a co-parsoner to handle the affairs of a family to a certain extent. So if he has been delegated a co-parsoner, then only can he stop a payment or countermand a check. Otherwise, he cannot do any of those things. All such rights till then are vested with Karta. That's it for now. Thank you.